News First News Line with Faraz Shaukatali. And very good evening to you and a warm welcome to News Line Live. Now then, um, we know there's a fuel crisis, there's a dollar crisis, and there's all sorts of crises going on, and there's a cabinet reshuffle carrying on at the moment. But uh, one of the mainstays of Sri Lanka's economy is, of course, uh, tourism, the hospitality, the leisure industry. And uh, this evening, we're delighted to have with us uh, one of the largest uh, uh, privately owned, now partly listed, uh, hotel companies, the homegrown brand uh, from the, the Jetwing brand. We have here the chairman of uh, Jetwing Symphony, Mr. Hiran Kure. Very good evening to you, Mr. Kure. Welcome. Good evening, Faraz. Nice to be with you. Indeed. Um, it's amazing that um, the Jetwing brand is still going strong, in spite and despite all the troubles we've had. By God's grace, yes. I mean, you know, uh, we've had a, as you know, uh, we had a very, very tough time, mm. uh, three years beginning with the Easter bombings and then the uh, COVID. Mm. Uh, it was really tough. But, uh, you know, we are focused only in tourism. Mm. There's sometimes some people might say we are stupid to be only in tourism, mm. but we, we are very passionate about it. Mm. And even during the toughest times, uh, we, we we continue to keep our people who work with us. That's really one of our strengths. Mm. And then the government also gave a moratorium that mm. helped us to cushion a little bit mm. to prolong. Isn't that, that a taking time bomb though? It is. I mean, you know, of course, uh, you know, the interest is added on and... The and how are you going to pay for this? Well, now that the tourism is kicking off again... So will your profits be enough to service the No, tourism? not at the moment. Uh, we're just recovering some of the... I mean, hopefully this financial year will end up with a small loss. Mm. Uh, but we will need to the hoteliers will need to renegotiate with the banks mm. and have a have a system where they will give a longer period for us to pay back because mm. if we are to pay back in five years i don't think that's going to happen but uh, all of this will affect the um uh, I was going to say the blessed inland revenue because they, they won't get any money from you. But no, they will get because of the value-added taxes coming. Oh, okay. So on top, we right. will be paying. We also pay the uh, you know the tourism development levy and all of that. Okay. So so they will get on uh, you know from the income. It's just that the profits won't. Profit yeah. taxes will be less. Right. Yes. Um, and of course, uh, I don't suppose that your industry will be subject to the surcharge tax. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for another day. Yes. Now then, uh, what's Sri Lanka's market? What, what kind of uh, level? Is it a $50 night uh, hotel? Is it a $200, $300? What, what's our market? We have a mix. Right. We have a mix. I mean, right now, I think still the, the lower end is more. Mm. The, the, I know the tourism industry, the Tourism Development Authority and the Promotions Bureau is working hard to reposition the country. Mm. That hasn't happened as it, but there is a plan mm. being worked out. Mm. So if that happens, ideal would be if we can have 30, 40, 50% of the high end, high net worth travelers coming in and the balance can be the backpackers and the, you know, the independent travelers who are traveling at a lower uh, price level because that's also important because finally they might become the high-end uh, travelers in another mm -hmm. 10 years time uh, there are hotels to cater to these uh, high net worth travelers mm. our infrastructure has improved now mm. uh, there are lots of facilities so so yes we are geared and we saw during the last two months we did have quite a number of people who were paying a reasonably good price as and this well. is including the the so-called lower end uh, traveler yes mm. including all of that so we right. had close to 90 95000 people traveling uh, in january and also in february so th those were reasonably good months um are, are you uh, as a hotelier are, are you uh, happy are you satisfied with the efforts of the uh, tourism development authorities and the tourism board is there anything <laughs> else they can do i don't want you to ruffle any feathers and no. and get mrs <laughs> fernando in in a tiz but you know uh, uh, no, i i think i think she's very passionate about the industry she yeah. she you know, she tries a level best yes. uh, there are you know other shortcomings which is which you can't blame it on one person no. or they're, they're sort of systemic 
it's it is yes mm. the AR and the FR systems mm. uh, you know she's unable to recruit uh, quality people mm. she's short staff I mean when I say short staff short of quality, quality staff, staff you know and so that is a challenge for her uh, and the team at uh, tourism so these are some of the issues that she has to also handle so you, you mentioned quality which is of course uh, in Sri Lanka we need a quality education mm -hmm. uh, and a quality education is uh, not uh, on the books at the moment because uh, on average we have 350,000 uh, students entering the education system when it comes to, uh, to university we've only got 35,000 spaces state and 15,000 extra another 114,000 vocational training mm -hmm. uh, so it leaves around 50% of our students unable to uh, get higher education so in, t in that quality education we have online now and so on but whilst online education is good and so on how do you manage to train your staff we have a program called JYDP, Jetwing New Development Program. Okay. I mean, we focus on the most underprivileged children mm. in different parts of the country, mm -hmm. and we give them uh, free education. We train them for free. I, we, in the in this business. In the in this business, right. yes. So we teach them English, mm -hmm. and then we teach them hospitality skills, mm. and most of them come out quite well. Mm. And we've now trained close to thousand three hundred students like that. So, uh, what's the staff strength? Uh, uh, like? We we had 3,600 mm. then we came down to about 2,800 now we've gone up to about 3,100 now and out of that what what who, what percentage would be through your uh, we trained 1,300 of them mm. I think we have about 600 left some okay. have got married and gone away some okay. have uh, some have gone abroad I suppose they've gone abroad right and they've gone to the Middle East and so on and some of them will come back and join us as well and do you have a policy on that do you no we don't try we don't restrict them because we are also happy that if they if they after two three years if they find a job uh, outside they go for a year or two f get further trained and come back mm. so that know? that that's really yes, yes. Um, um, we had some ma many many questions from uh, I suppose people who live in, in and around Nigambo uh, and thank you for your <coughs> questions you can send them uh, 0772 300 305 card coming up on the screen some of the questions in connection with Nigambo because you have what I believe six properties yes there. and so yes. you may be <coughs> well be the dominant uh, hotelier in the area mm -hmm. some say that the Nigambo beach is neglected it appears neglected another one says that there is not enough of beach activity um, uh, going on is you know it's all it's all hotels and restaurants but there's nothing on the beach uh, mm. where you can mm. go and have a cup of coffee or juice a beer whatever god I did I say beer right then uh, you know so that's kind of thing what right. do you say about that well I mean all the hotels in Nigambo yeah. are facing the sea yeah right yeah. and it's on the beach yeah and and the actually the beach is one of the nicest beaches in the country yeah uh, it's a very wide beach it's a it's it's a clean beach I mean and and it's it's an area that the fishermen and the hoteliers work very closely so they together. coexist absolutely mm. I mean even if you go there mm. you will never see a gate or a fence that means that the, the, the relationship and the coexistence of the hoteliers and the fishermen are very much there mm. so it is a very lively place mm. and there's a lot of activity I mean I I mean okay if somebody is looking for major sports or major activities there probably isn't mm. but there is uh, other activities there are lots of cafes on the beach side uh, lots of restaurants uh, shopping but uh, what about water sports have you uh, <laughs> has your group not got into that part no of it? that's yes. something that we haven't got into but there are others who are specializing in that who are doing it there's more they work out of your or yes your they, 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 there is uh, there is in Jetwing Lagoon on the lagoon itself there are water sports activities mm -hmm. and on the sea as well <clears throat> and so what's the outlook as, as Sri Lanka's dominant homegrown hotelier mm. what's uh, what's the outlook I think now we are getting more and more tourism arrivals. Uh, 
uh, sadly the conflict in uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine mm. is not helping us at this point in time mm. uh, because these were two of the main markets also coming into Sri Lanka mm. so that that will take a obviously a hit uh, for us but overall with the relaxation of the arrival uh, uh, restrictions mm. I mean you know now uh, if you are double vaccinated uh, you know you can walk into the country mm. which is a huge boost uh, uh, for us and uh, with very likely very soon we will have most other internal COVID restrictions also completely uh, removed mm -hmm. and if that happens I think we'll have a much greater flow of tourists coming in uh, we see that happening in India and if China opens out to foreign travel we can expect uh, towards the end of the year uh, mm -hmm. much much better what performance kind of, from tourism. What, what kind of promotion would you like uh, the authorities to to do I know you pay the tourism development levy yes. and so on and so forth mm -hmm. but what would you like them to really do uh, out, out there to attract more people right I think on the on the on the development board side I think the regulation is necessary first mm. you know because we've had so many hotels coming up all over the place the high-rise buildings mm. all of that so there has to be some kind of a control management of that on the development side and, and standard. standards mm. and on the promotion side we have to promote the best the country has to offer mm. you know the highlights of the country and and create new new uh, itineraries and so on so that the people have something new to look forward to I mean you take Singapore Singapore is a little town yeah. but every year they come out with new itineraries new activities and so on mm. so e now in our own way we together with Khanisans mm. uh, who have developed a beautiful uh, glamping site in Galloya. Mm. Uh, we are trying to uh, create a new itinerary, Valavaya two nights, uh, Galloya two nights mm. and Portuville two nights and give throw this out as something very special, very unique for people to do. In addition, yeah. if, from the Tourism Promotion Bureau, they need to highlight and look at the top end. Is, it, is there enough advertising going on? Not at the moment. Mm. There's a plan being uh, in progress. I think it should get approved pretty soon. Mm. Uh, I only hope the uh, lack of money in the country won't delay that process mm. as well. Because if we don't promote the destination, we will not get the desired clientele into the country. So it's very important that we promote and we continue to promote the destination. Talking about money, for just for a second, mm -hmm. are you happy or unhappy about the exchange rate offered by Mr. Cabral? Is he giving you 10 rupees more? No, I think we are getting uh, 202 rupees or something right. like that. Uh, but at least, in bearing in mind the <laughs> fact that you your uh, ticking time bomb, the moratorium for your yes, loans, yes. at least don't you think that the hoteliers, the mm. registered hoteliers, should get at least in something close to the uh, so-called curbside rate? At least to mitigate ideally, the ideally, I mean, you know, we should get that. But mm. uh, we also have a. Sometimes I feel we have a moral obligation as well yeah. uh, that this country needs the money, and then we. Need but where is the uh, where is the morality? Uh, where is the line between mo moral values and real real life that's financial values? That's that's another thing. Yeah. Perhaps Dr. Razin Sali is uh, when he is in Sri Lanka can come and give us an economic out. Uh, yes. Uh, sort of, uh, outlook on that. Um, how does the um, well we've asked you that already um, now then there's something I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. which seems to be odd to me let's say you're flying from London to Sri Lanka or and then compare that with London to Bangkok Bangkok is two hours extra flying time so Sri Lanka is two hours less mm -hmm. flying time but the fares to Sri Lanka are more than the fares to to Bangkok why why is that why why can't we lobby the airlines here and say listen are you comparing only Sri Lankan Airlines or are you looking at other airlines I'm looking at well? other airlines but mainly I was looking at Sri okay. Lankan airlines. because Sri Lankan will charge a premium because it's a direct flight to Colombo okay whereas if you fly on any other uh, you know Emirates Airlines you have to stop halfway mm. and you know get out get out get in again mm. so for those who like to save that two three hours stop over the only choice is Sri Lankan mm -hmm. so then they will they so there's will, a premium there you are pay a but you know Sri Lankan Airlines being all owned by you me and everybody else yes because we pay their losses mm -hmm. whether you like it or not 
to folks at Sri Lankan, that's how it is. So why can't they put to good or better use those losses uh, by promote being purely uh, a, the carrier that's bringing in valuable dollars into the country? Mm-hmm. In fairness to them, they do that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, earlier, Sri Lankan Airlines used to bring in at least 60 percent of our tourists into mm-hmm. the country. I think now with uh, Emirates, Qatar and all the other Singapore Airlines increasing frequencies, mm. uh, their market share has dropped a bit, mm. but still they probably uh, carry at least 40 percent of our uh, tourists who come into the country. So they do a uh, service, mm. but whether they should be more competitive pricing is a question that, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know whether they should be more efficient and then reduce the, uh, you know, price cost, whatever. But um, at the moment, as we all know, they also need money mm. uh, for their own survival. On that note, let's go for a quick break and take a peek at this evening's headline news uh, from the News First uh, Primetime News Team. We'll see you on the other side of the break, shall we? News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And uh, welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Mr. Hiran Kure, uh, hotelier, homegrown, Sri Lankan hotelier. Uh, now then, the chairman of uh, Jetwing Symphony. Um, we, we are asking, uh, so, somebody's raising the question, would you as a, as a leading hotelier back a move uh, to ask the government to consider uh, issuing six-month visas to residents of so-called winter countries, uh, sort of a winter right. visa. M- most definitely. I mean, that's something that maybe even up to a year, mm. you know, give, give a, year, a visa that is valid for a year maybe. Because there'll be people who'll want to travel uh, two, three times in a year. Yeah. And if it's valid for that period, uh, they can come in and go out, all of that. We have to facilitate that, make it as easy as possible. Yeah. At this point in time, when you get a one-month visa and to get it renewed... Well, it's, it's a terrible nuisance to yes, do that because you do is, have to come to Colombo yes. and then there's medicals to yeah. be done and, and strangely, yeah, there's yeah. only one place you can mm. uh, do that medical. Uh, we don't know how that uh, happened, but, you know, that's what... Yeah. It, mm. now, the, the other question someone's asking is about the airport taxis. It appears that it is an informal service. There are no standards and when in comparison to let's say to Thailand uh, where you you land or in Singapore and you know you you get a comfortable car it's in a good condition you don't have to think about those yeah. issues and coming off a flight after so many hours you don't want to think about yeah. those issues what's happening in Sri Lanka why aren't we why aren't this we is a, this is this is an area that really needs change yeah because uh, it's not only taxis yeah, there has to be even a, a public uh, you know bus service a train service all of that because we are now having more and more independent travelers coming into the country mm. they are booking online mm. and then they decide to go somewhere on their own so there has to be a proper taxi service that's proper right uh, therefore we can't that. even have any of these online services there. yes it is a bit of i think a couple of people tried to change it right didn't work but yeah. someone well, because there's obviously a mafia there. it is it is yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, how how are they asking you? How's your group coping with the uh, with the power crisis? Uh, how how's that? What's it doing to your balance sheet? Well, it I- it is costing us quite a lot of money to operate the generators, mm. and most of these generators are standby generators. They are not ready to run seven hours at a stretch. Mm. Uh, be that as it may, a 500 kV, kV generator will consume 100 to 120 liters of diesel mm. per hour. Oh. So, so that's a ch- huge challenge at yeah. this point in time uh, to get the diesel and to operate the generators. Mm. Uh, most of the j- hoteliers have their own generators, mm. but at this, I mean, for a short period, I think we can manage. Mm. But if it goes on. Then, then it'll be a huge struggle for us. Uh, another question somebody sent me was that uh, because uh, once again your group has a property within, uh, well, at Yala, mm-hmm. and they're saying, pointing out that four months of the year, generally there's no water, the animals are really suffering, or mm. it's a challenge for the animals. Um, as a hotel in that area, uh, benefiting from visitors coming to Yala, 
what can you do about it? You know, what have you, are you doing about we it? We work with the wildlife department and I know at, at certain times when it's really dry and no water at all, mm. wildlife have bouses mm -hmm. and they, they actually transport uh, fresh water onto those willows and uh, small tanks. Mm and uh, put water in there uh, and we support their, that cause. We also have uh, desalination plants in the hotel so mm. we also sometimes give but they normally transport water from Tissamaharama. So thankfully the animals, it's a, it's a tough time for animals but they, we haven't had any uh, times that where the animals have died due to lack of water. Mm. Uh, this question is, uh, thank you very much for sending it actually, must have taken away the courage. Uh, it is from somebody who says that, uh, uh, I don't know if it's male or female, but the person uh, says it is, uh, he or she is from the hotel industry mm -hmm. and says, the question goes like this, in case, if you can imagine you are the president of the country, what are the steps you would you take to promote tourism and um, and the poor employees who uh, who worked in the industry uh, and who are even now working there, but they, are, they have lots of challenges. And we feel that uh, there is no president in our country. Oh. <laughs> At least I will have one vote then. Yes, you will. Uh, you I'll have, have one, one vote. vote. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, but I think tourism can definitely play a huge role in improving the economy mm. because the tourists go all over the country, Jaffna, from the north to the south, to everywhere the tourists will travel and the money will trickle down. So that's why I'm, I'm very keen to see, we don't count the number of people who will visit the country, but who uh, we will focus on the revenue per tourist. What, what's the revenue per tourist now? What, uh, About $170, $180. That's is, is that a bit low? It, well, some countries are lower than that, some countries are higher. Mm. So I would look at, you know, ideally $250 a day per mm. person if we can uh, earn that amount of money and that money filters down to the, you know, people of this country, uh, at that, that'll, that'll help. And mm. the other is that we should educate our people. Mm -hmm. It's if, if <laughs> I have no interest in becoming president, but if I have a chance of advising a person who's running the country, there has to be enough education where we respect people. You know, I respect you for saying that yes, because, because we, we keep saying about a quality education. Yes, so that, that you know, we, what we say, we, we, while we give service from our heart, sometimes we don't respect female travelers, free independent female travelers, we don't respect them. So we have to learn to respect them, whether they are white or black, whatever the color of the skin, mm. we have to respect them. We have to love and respect mm. the travelers who come here and look after them with care, because that's the most important uh, message mm. um, anyone can give is when they feel safe, that they don't get cheated uh, by our people and that's that's something that I would like to see happen and um, is the um, uh, is the fuel crisis uh, impacting on you transporting your guests it is impacting it is a huge inconvenience for our uh, transport division uh, the poor drivers have to st sometimes stand in line from 4 in the morning yeah. to get some uh, you know diesel into the vehicles so all of this ultimately eats into the bottom line of course of course this is additional cost also for the dr poor drivers uh, they have to you know break rest and be on online and uh, uh, as a seasoned uh, hotelier uh, all over uh, all over our beautiful country um, how, what, what's your take on uh, places like Mirissa, Unawatana and, and you know the beach, uh, the beach sort of side mm -hmm. of things, Weligama and oh. so on. Do you welcome that? Do you want to? I, I do, provided that there is no, no violence. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's just fun, uh, partying, activity, surfing, music, dancing, yeah. that's fine. I mean, you know, youngsters need that. Yeah. And that's, that becomes a place for people to hang out mm. and all of that. As long as it doesn't end up in violence, I think we should encourage that. And what's your stance on uh, getting liquor licenses and all that? Do you think it meant to be made easier? It has to be made easy. I mean, you know, it is, it is a nightmare to get uh, liquor licenses today. Mm. Uh, most of the time, you know, we, some people have to wait for two, three years to get uh, a license. And if there, God forbid, if there's a, a temple or a church or, or a, a school, school yeah. y you're done. I mean, you know. You're cooked then. <laughs>
so so and that leads to you know people selling liquor uh, you know illicit. of of illicit liquor you know so that's that's worse so you know if if, if there are beef. so when when uh, will you know successive governments 74 years they've had to sort this blessed thing out they haven't done it when do you think you're going to have some wide angle thinking person to do this well i think we had one unfortunately he, he died, died, he died uh, recently yes. poor mangala, poor mangala yes, yes. Uh, he tried to change and you know i think a lot of people just gave him such a hard time he uh, gave up he's the only one who really uh, came out and said wanted to change the excise laws which were written in 1918 or 1915 or something like that and uh, uh, you know he was not allowed to do that somebody wants to know <coughs> if you've received any award for services to the tourism industry because they say well done but have you got any award <laughs> well i think uh, president chandrika bandarnayaka kumar tunga yeah. uh, during her tenure uh, she gave uh, the title sri lanka sikamani right. uh, i'm grateful to her for that okay. uh, but yes she's the one who recognized my services uh, i don't know whether she made a mistake but she did <laughs> Uh, tell me, do you treat, uh, this is the last question I think, well, no we haven't, we've got three minutes Harshana. Uh, look, tell me, well, this disparity, you know, sometimes tourists go to say Sigiri, they've got to pay dollars mm -hmm. in a, and it's a different rate and Sri Lankans pitch up and they pay 50 bucks or mm. something like that. And it's, it's a similar situation in hotels, is it? Do you, do you have uh, do you have different rates for Sri Lankans and tourists? We have. How, we do, ha you, how do you justify that? Well, it's it's uh, Sri Lankans are our number one market. Okay. Even during the best year we had 2018-19, yeah. 25 percent of our business to Jetwing hotels was Sri Lankans. Mm -hmm. So we always, I mean, you know, good times and in bad, the Sri Lankans come. So they mainstay. They are mainstay. Right. So we always so main, like they they maintain a rupee rate because they earn in rupees. So we have to give in rupees. Right. And then for the foreigners, we have a you know hard currency dollars or pounds right. or whatever. And now of course you're going to uh, have to charge in dollars. No, charge in dollars yeah. as well. Okay. Uh, unless they show uh, you know slip uh, saying that they exchange the money here. Yeah. And yeah, so so we 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 maintain that uh, for the hotels we haven't had a problem, but I know at the cultural sites in the national parks mm. uh, when they see this, you know, uh, foreigner thirty five dollars and yeah. Sri Lankan fifty rupees, that ends up in sometimes. Do, would you much prefer that they remove <coughs> that last bit because yes, you know that they should just give it free to the Sri Lankans? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then there's no problem. Long years ago, the the president of Sri Lanka cricket at the time during a, a test match at uh, or one day or a test match at Gaul uh, had a complaint from the then president saying that why are you charging everyone five thousand rupees? Mm. And he said, well, you know, I can charge them ten thousand, and I'd still sell it all. So you know, the president was a bit unhappy, and so what they did is they stuck a board outside on one of the side gates and said, if you show us your ID, this coming free. You, yes, because you can get temporary membership. <laughs> Uh, um, so that was all right. But then, you know, you can watch the cricket from the ramparts. Mm. Uh, but Hirankari, it's been marvelous talking to you. Thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of uh, everyone in Sri Lanka, I hope that you uh, get the, I hope the uh, tourists start arriving and then you can do your part uh, towards uh, making Mr. Cabral a happy little bunny uh, <laughs> with all the dollies. On that note, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you. Faras, for having me this evening. And thank you to a fabulous Jetwing team that you have in all your properties. Um, we much enjoy that. And that's the way it was uh, on News Island Live today. We hope that uh, the fuel queues and uh, the uh, power cuts won't uh, keep you up. Because soon, rather than later, we hope that it'll all uh, be water under the bridge. All right. Take care. God bless you. And it's now time for the primetime news.